The Windows experience and browsers are becoming a worse and worse experience. And I'm glad that I'm using Linux for the most part here, not that I can get away from using Windows fully, but with all this constant bloat being added, as we see here, making every Windows 11 PC an AI PC, we're gonna be getting into how browsers and operating systems are becoming more and more controlled by AI, especially with the now Windows 10 end of life. This was introduced only two days after that. And while Microsoft is pushing more and more of its users to Windows 11 and introducing more and more AI baked into the operating system, it's really starting to be a problem with privacy concerns when using these tools. So let's talk about the push for Microsoft, Windows, and various different other players like OpenAI, Perplexity, trying to get you to use AI on your browser and the concerns about this. So in October 16, 2025, we have a post making every Windows 11 PC an AI PC. Who asked for that? I don't know. But now Microsoft is rolling out a major Windows 11 update, making every Windows computer quote unquote an AI PC. And it's all centered around their Copilot AI with its built-in AI assistant. So they claim new Copilot and Agenic experiences make powerful AI easy on Windows 11. And the three capstones here that they are saying they're trying to follow is first, you should be able to interact with it naturally in text or voice and have it understand you. Second, it should be able to see what you see and be able to offer guided support. This is wild, in my opinion, especially after the cluster that Microsoft have with their recall feature, which was saving screenshots, even of user sensitive data at one point. We'll see how good this rollout is. And third, it should be able to take action on your behalf. What's the point of even using in an operating system if you're gonna hand off all of your actions? Are those actions even going to be completed correctly? All questions that we'll have as this rollout begins. And then of course, all of your permission and built upon the security of Windows 11. As long as it's opt out, they don't care because they can still use data until you tell them not to. Regardless, there's so much to this that we'll be getting into. But there's also another front where this is taking place. It's in our browsers. More and more browsers are adding extensions, completely overhauling themselves, or introducing new browsers entirely that are AI-centric or focused with agentic experiences, all cool new buzzwords, and most of them fail to do anything substantial. So new features like Just Ask, Hey Copilot on Windows 11. I'm gonna ask a question. Does anyone remember Cortana and Windows attempt to have a basically Siri voice assistant baked into its operating system? Well, don't worry, this time it's different with Copilot, I'm sure. Control anything with your voice and let AI interact with your computer instead of yourself. I don't know why companies keep trying to push for this voice AI assistant type deal. People just don't seem to use it, yet they keep trying to bring it back. Well, I would be naive to say I don't know why. I mean, it's another way for them to gather information and process voice data, which who knows how they would use to target more ads or other things towards you. Linux is starting to look pretty good right now, isn't it? Anyways, Copilot Vision on Windows is now available worldwide. What does it help you do? It's a full desktop and app sharing experience. It can help you analyze content, provide insights to your questions and answers. Coaching, it gives you coaching. Wow, everything. Highlights, with highlights, you can ask Copilot to show me how for a specific task and show you within the app where to click and what to do. Full app context and Word, Excel, PowerPoint, again, Microsoft products, text in, text out, giving the ability to converse with co-pilot vision using text and much, much more getting added here. So why do people have concerns over this thing? Well, there's massive privacy risks. Co-pilot vision can see your screen and analyze content, potentially exposing private data and sensitive information. Also, there's this AI overreach and loss of control. Copilot Actions lets AI take actions on your behalf, moving, editing, deleting local files, you would assume. That's a major step towards getting rid of user control. And what kind of transparency is going to be behind all of that? What is actually being collected within those actions? Who really knows? And then you have this forced integration and lock-in. Of course, these AI features being deeply embedded in Windows 11 are going to make it difficult for you to fully disable them. Making Windows overall more bloated, again, Linux is starting to look better and better because you don't have this constant data collection and trying to monetize you at every single place, including all the fancy ads that are now even baked into the Windows operating system. It's interesting as in the worst case, this risks normalizing more data collection and is fundamentally shifting how users control and use their PCs. And it's not just on the Windows front. Many other companies like OpenAI are trying to do their own play here with 
the browser space, introducing ChatGPT Atlas. Just recently introduced about a few days ago, you can only download this for Mac OS. Interestingly enough, it's only available for Mac OS. Why is that? Well, I'm starting to think it might be something to do with that Microsoft OpenAI relationship, but regardless, Today, we're introducing ChatGPT Atlas, a new web browser built with ChatGPT at its core. So we're not gonna go into this whole entire thing, but this also seems silly. Chrome already does everything you really need. And it's a Chromium based browser as almost every browser is. We're gonna get into that in a moment, but most users really don't wanna switch browsers. Browsers are sticky. Even Microsoft has failed to get people to switch over to Brave and to try to take away from the dominance of Google Chrome. AI assistants already integrate like ChatGPT, Copilot, Perplexity, and others can be ran in extensions that are already exist inside of Chrome. So a whole new browser really is weird. But again, what do these companies stand to gain from this? Well, imagine a full integration of memory and context this new Atlas product could then tie ChatGPT's memory to your browsing history directly and can build contexts around your chat history, documents, browsing, and everything that you might do in a browser. The claim to help you buy ChatGPT can now click around and fill forms for you, compare options, and take actions on your behalf. But do you really want this? With privacy, trust, and data control getting eroded, does this actually make anything better for you? Yeah, it might save you a couple seconds, but more than likely it's gonna actually cost more time to set up that agent to actually do something for you. But regardless, there's a heavy push across the industry to lock you in even more. And I'm sure many users don't want AI watching everything that they browse. It seems like the web is trying to move away from search engines to autonomous assistants that help you do everything. But I think this has failed in the past. We have had things like Cortana and Siri and all this fun stuff. No one wanted to really use it as they became side quests of massive organizations. And now we're making another push for all of this. So ChatGPT Atlas, download for Mac OS today. It will help you unlock the web with ChatGPT by your side, picks up where you left off, takes action for you, assists you when and where you need it. You're in control. At what point do we bake this into Windows as well? Windows might not actually apply Atlas to its operating system as a default browser in the future, but I don't think it'd be a far reach to say that it might take the best things and apply it to its own web browser once they figure out what actually works with consumers and users and apply it directly to Edge. It's really starting to become more and more of a tight knit locked in ecosystem. And to me, Linux is starting to look better than ever right now. So for those of you users still using Windows, maybe it's time to check out some of the Linux alternatives for Windows. I have plenty of videos on this. And if you enjoy this type of content, don't forget to subscribe below and smash that like button on the way back up. As users seem to be losing control and transparency, Linux systems are fundamentally user controlled and open source, meaning you can see what's running on your computer, completely disable it, remove it yourself if you really want to. There's no hidden telemetry. Everything is opaque when it comes to processes that are being used on your computer. You choose what gets installed, you choose when updates get applied, and if any data leaves your machine. We can see push from all these other companies to keep you in one locked in ecosystem. Let's talk a little bit about Chromium and Chrome has almost always been leading the charge when it comes to 71% of the worldwide market share, according to Stack Counter, is running Chrome as their default web browser. Nothing else comes even close. Safari is second, but at a measly 14% in comparison to the 71%. So this is where I'm really confused as Edge only has under 4.6%, where is OpenAI's Atlas supposed to take from at this point? If Edge can't even move the needle, why would they think in a Mac OS specific browser that they would be able to take some of the 14% away from Safari? Anyways, that perplexes me, but that brings me to Perplexity, the browser that works for you. Another attempt to grab more of the browser market share Doing anything with common perplexity is another AI company that's trying to get you to go towards using their personal assistant through their new browser. Guess what this is built upon? And commonly asked questions are, what platforms is common available on? How do I install comment? That's pretty sad if you don't know how to download and open up an executable. What search engine does comment use? Well, you would think perplexity, right? Yep. Is comment free? Of course it's free. Who would pay for a browser at this point? Although it feels like more and more that we're gonna have to start paying for our privacy. 
Anyways, let's talk chromium. Chromium, for those of you unaware, is basically at the root of almost every modern browser experience today. Chromium is a free and open source web browser project, primarily developed and maintained by Google. Go figure. It's a widely used code base, providing the vast majority of code for Google Chrome and many other browsers, including Microsoft Edge, Samsung Internet, never have heard of that, and Opera. The code is also used by several app frameworks. Let's actually go down to the bottom because we have a list of some of the browsers that are based on Chromium that you've actually heard of instead of Samsung internet. So here we go. Arc is a new build that a lot of people are talking about. Microsoft Edge is based off of Chromium. Also some ones that are free and open source include Brave that I like to suggest to people to use if they're trying to find a privacy focused free and open source version of the Chromium browser. Unless you wanna just build everything from source yourself, you can also just use Chromium as your foundational web browser but Brave adds extra tools on top of it like Adblock and some different privacy and security controls. Anyways, Perplexity and OpenAI aren't the only companies trying to get to you on the web. Claude from Anthropic has introduced their Claude code extension now that you can run in parallel with whatever you're doing on the web. And basically it's an extension where you can interact with their AI as you work with projects and program. They've also been piloting the Claude for Chrome product, which is another extension. At least Claude is trying to go with a better approach, in my opinion, just giving you an extension, which most of these companies already offer, that works alongside of whatever browser that you're currently using. That way there's no question when using their browser if they're containing any sort of data collection or telemetry in the background. I do wanna shout out Mudahar for a deep dive into all of this over the last few days. There are a few videos worth watching as Mudahar goes into actually using some of these tools and explaining, well, how bad they are. First, we talk Windows 11 on Windows 11 just got way more bloated. I'm gonna put a link in the description below to all these videos, definitely worth watching. Please don't download ChatGPT's Atlas and this is going to be a controversial video. This all goes back to Microsoft's AI PC direction and how corporate companies are trying to push for more and more baked in AI features, which lessen user control and I'm afraid transparency as well. Linux systems fundamentally are user controlled because they are open source and you can see what's being ran on your computer. You can disable code, you can remove code. You can also choose to use a different Linux distribution if one doesn't match your needs, meaning no hidden telemetry. You don't have all these extra AI processes being added and additional bloat being added to your PCs. You choose what gets installed, you choose when to update, or what experience you would like. Most Linux distributions, including Ubuntu, Fedora, Debian, Arch, do not harvest your personal data or have you even connect to a cloud AI by default. If you want AI, yeah, you can add it in yourself, including installing local models that don't talk to the cloud, and there's no forced hardware upgrades. Recently, Windows 10 reached its end of life, meaning older machines are basically being forced to abandon Windows 10 and move to Windows 11, and when they can't because of some sort of hardware that's incompatible with Windows 11, you're forced to buy new hardware for all of these features that you may not want. Linux, on the other hand, will work on hardware even from decades ago. It lets you repurpose old computers and hardware and allows you to choose whatever you want to run on it. Linux has a massive global community that's concerned with these types of additions to their operating system. The computer is truly yours with Linux, so I'm just suggesting as things get more and more bloated, specifically on Windows, think about at least trying Linux at this point, especially if you're concerned about your privacy, the control you have, if you have older hardware, or you're worried about lock-in. These are all great reasons to start checking out Linux. And of course, I have plenty of videos to start your Linux journey on this channel. I'd love you to follow along. Don't forget to subscribe below, smash that like button. If you're ready to level up that Linux experience, I do have a checklist, cheat sheet, and mind map all available at SavvyNick.com. Check that out today. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.